This is a handheld computer, providing you with the full power of a Raspberry Pi in a compact form factor. A full thumb typing keyboard, gamepad buttons, and a trackball allow you to run any Linux software you can think of on the 5 inch screen. Play some games, do some network pen testing, or turn it into the ultimate handheld radio device. This is U Console from Clockwork. This is such a cool device. And what makes it even cooler is that it's very easy to modify and add new functionality. But more on that later. First, let's take a look at the hardware of the U Console. Or is it pronounced Micro Console? I don't know. Let's get into it. When you receive your U Console, you have to assemble it yourself which is very easy as the different parts are simply placed on top of each other, sandwiched together and are held in place by screws. The same screws are used for the entire assembly, which is nice. The version I've got here comes with a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. The manual is very minimal in its description, so it was slightly confusing how this module is supposed to be mounted. And it was a bit scary pushing it into the adapter with some force until it clicked into place. The adapter then clicks into the main board. The two speakers sit loosely in these holes and the manual doesn't specify what orientation they need to be in, which is simply because they can go in either way. Once the PCB above is mounted, it presses down on the speaker connectors. Very clever. Be aware that the battery module connector needs to be pushed in to connect properly. At first I'd simply laid the connector on top and tightened the screws, and it seemed to boot correctly, but whenever I plugged in a USB device it would power off. Since the body is entirely made of metal, the Wi-Fi antenna needs to go on the outside. This included flimsy, flat and self-adhering antenna needs to be taped on top of the U-Console. This isn't a very good solution, but more on that later. Finally, the heat conductive blob is placed on the CPU of the CM4 board so that it connects with the back plate when closed. U Console doesn't come with batteries, so you will have to supply your own 18650s and take care to orient the polarity correctly. On top of the device, a micro SD card containing the OS can be inserted. Next to it is the power button that needs to be held down for a few seconds to boot the device. This thing feels like some sort of industrial equipment. The full aluminium body is rock solid and the clicky keyboard is surprisingly good for thumb typing. There is however room for some minor improvements. So let's get started hacking this device. Sticking this Wi-Fi antenna directly onto the metal body makes it work significantly worse than it could have. The easy solution is to put a spacer between the metal frame and the antenna. But even if you do this, the Wi-Fi range still isn't very good. So I went a bit further and 3D printed this SMA connector holder, which fits neatly on the corner with an M4x6 screw. If you get this short stubby Wi-Fi antenna, it can actually fold down perfectly in the groove on top, even without covering the power button. This mod significantly increases the Wi-Fi range of the U console, and I will link the parts you need in the description. I think the idea of having a trackball is great. I don't like touchscreens, especially on a device like this, which primarily runs software made for keyboard and mouse. However, the specific trackball used on this device is very loose and imprecise, and the cursor can jump around unpredictably when in use. It uses a standard BlackBerry trackball, and it can easily be replaced as it's just held onto the magnetic sensors on the board by the front plate. Other U console owners have had better experiences with replacement trackballs, but the ones I've ordered seems just as bad as the one it came with. If you do replace the trackball, make sure to orient it correctly by having the little metal tab point either upwards or downwards. If you order a U console with a CM4 board, you also get a 32GB microSD card with the U-Console-ready Raspberry Pi operating system preloaded. This is important since you cannot easily just use any OS, as it needs to have the correct drivers for the screen and keyboard. Unfortunately, the stock install has a few issues, like the screen backlight and audio not working correctly. 
Fortunately, the community has made a bunch of ready-made modified images that not only fixes these problems, but also allow you to run other distributions like Arch, Ubuntu, or even RetroPie. I've installed the bookworm image on mine, which works perfectly, featuring the minimalistic LXDE desktop environment. The only thing about the U console that feels slightly fragile is the screen. It turns out that a screen protector from SmallRig, originally made for Blackmagic cameras, specifically the 6K Pro, fits perfectly onto the U console screen. The only downside is that the screen protector is a bit shiny and causes some glare. I've also 3D printed a screen cover for when transporting the device in a bag. And I found this case that fits it pretty good. I will link these below. This is an RTL SDR V4. It's a tiny, cheap USB device that allows you to receive and decode radio communication from airplanes, ships, satellites, and even shortwave communication from around the world. Using this portably with the U console is great, but it's a bit annoying having this thing dangling off on the side. So I've taken this and put it inside of this. Inside of the U console, there's an unpopulated expansion PCB if you have the version without a 4G modem. Certain solder pads on this board are actually a USB connection. So with my poor soldering skills, I've taken the RTL SDR board, removed the USB and SMA connector, and instead soldered on wires to connect it directly inside. I've used the extra expansion cover plate that comes in the U-Console box, which already has a hole in it. This hole needs to be slightly increased in size to fit the SMA connector. And the expansion board also needs to be cut slightly to make room for the connector and cable. I've given everything a bit of hot glue to make sure that my poor soldering doesn't shake loose. I discovered this mod on the awesome YouTube channel Back Office Show. Check out his great video for a detailed explanation of how it's done. He also has a video on how to mod in a GPS. With this mod, I can now simply connect an antenna on the side of the U console and start tracking local airplanes, decode their ACAS messages, track local ships, see weather stations and remote control data, decode POCSAC and APOS, or simply tune around the bands with SDR software and receive shortwave signals from the other side of the planet. The possibilities are endless. This SDR mod hugely increases the usefulness and cool factor of this device. But let's take a look at some of the other things that I use the U console for. Obviously, having such a small, portable computer is excellent for penetration testing tasks on location, like running network analysis, remoting into devices, or running Wi-Fi attacks. The built-in Wi-Fi card doesn't allow monitor mode, so you need to use an external one. This might be another thing that you would want to mod inside instead. It's also useful for controlling hack ROF or even updating and moving files to and from a Flipper Zero. U console can also be used to control a Mestastic device. I've just velcroed this one onto the back, but this would also be an easy mod to do internally. It's also very useful for amateur radio operations. For instance, for connecting to a radio and doing digital modes like FT8, or just as a handy digital logbook. Of course, it also runs a bunch of different retro emulators and games. I'd say that it's mostly useful for keyboard and mouse based games and emulators. Even though it does have gamepad buttons, I find that the ones on dedicated emulator devices are nicer to use for games that require fast movement. Finally, I do occasionally enjoy exploring some retro BBSs, and the U-Console is perfect for lying on the couch and poking around at message boards, ANSI art, and door games. What would you use a handheld computer like this for? Maybe load up an offline version of Wikipedia and have your very own Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So if you're considering ordering this awesome piece of tech, I have to warn you, you might have to wait a long time for it to arrive. It took 10 months from when I ordered it until I received it. And that's even though they claim an up to 90 day delivery time on the website, which is clearly false. And from reading the experiences on Discord, this isn't uncommon. 
So was it worth the wait? The keyboard of this device has the perfect amount of satisfying clickiness and resistance for thumb typing. It even has a backlight and controls for adjusting screen brightness and volume. You can also lock the keyboard to prevent unnecessary key presses. My only annoyance is that the spacebar only clicks in the middle, not on the sides. The gamepad buttons on top also works as regular navigation buttons, and having the mouse left and right click on the left is surprisingly usable. To middle click, simply press down on the trackball. You can also connect Bluetooth devices, like a keyboard and mouse, or even a gamepad if you prefer. The speakers are not very good, and the sound can't really escape the metal body well, but at least they work fine for regular notification sounds. The screen is a quite nice IPS display with a resolution of 1280 by 720 which is plenty for the 5 inch size. The viewing angles are pretty good and could have been a lot worse, but they could also have been a bit better. There is a single USB-C connection on the side which is used exclusively for charging, not for data. Unfortunately, it only supports regular old 5 volt USB charging at 2 amps and not power delivery. The charging speed is fine though. There is only one USB-A port for data connections. If you want more USB ports, someone on Tindy has designed a cool looking expansion board with three USB-C ports. The battery life depends on what capacity 18650 cells you put in it, and on what software you're running. I'm getting about 6-7 to seven hours of light use out of these, and about half of that when I'm using the RTL SDR. Luckily it doesn't seem to draw much power when not in use. Clockwork is a small company, trying to keep up with all the orders, and it's surely complicated to source components and work with manufacturers and ship out batches. To be fair, they've been very responsive to my impatient emails, and from the Discord it's clear that everyone is getting their order eventually. It seems like it might arrive faster if you don't order it with a CM4 module included. I bought this U console with my own money and I absolutely think that it was worth the wait. I hope I've given you a small insight into what the Clockwork U console is all about. <laughs>